Hey guys, Maggie here with Ironside Ranch and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with our ranch life here. As well, we're going to uh, go ahead and do another top 10 list for our tools and, uh, and get some more tools out there. So we're going to talk about the kind of top 10 tools that we use here on the farm. All right, guys, so with our farm life here, we've had some changes come up, and uh, you all know that um, we could, if you've watched any of our Let's Talk to you, uh, videos, you'll, you'll know that what we were planning on doing is taking this farm that we have here, which is 20 acres, and uh, originally we were going to build this out, and then we decided, well, we would just sell this, and uh, we'd try to make a, a um, 100, we took, we bought 150 acres up uh, in the north, north part of Alabama, and we are going to turn that into our little homestead. Uh, some plans are currently changing right now. It looks like we're going to at least stay here for the foreseeable future. Um, and so we're going to kind of keep developing this here. And uh, hopefully when we go to sell this place, we'll get a little bit more money for it. Uh, but uh, um, anyway, so, so that's kind of what's going on with our ranch life. So was, I tell you that so that you know that we'll have some more videos out here. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be posting a lot more um, and, and hopefully get back on our schedule doing one video a week. Um, Amanda Lynn did just have our baby, so uh, she's still in kind of recovery mode. So um, that being said, after she kind of heals a little bit, then we'll, then we'll push back to, uh, to, to one video a week. Um, at minimum, it's probably two a month, but we're, we're hoping for one a week. So what I thought I'd talk to you all about is because we've done some of these top 10 videos with tools, and it seems like people like them a lot. And uh, so I wanted to do a top 10 video with tools um, on what we use for our mechanical tools. And so we talked about like homesteader tools and stuff like that in the past. And we talked about first tools for your workshop. Um, and then so if you're getting into your homestead, let's say you're buying a riding lawnmower or getting your first pickup or whatever it is, um, there's some tools that you all need um, and uh, it, some, some basic hand tools. So this is, this is my toolbox that I use for, for vehicle and equipment repair. Uh, so this is obviously not a carpenter's toolbox, so there's no saws or, or framing hammers or anything in here. Um, so this is this is specifically for working on vehicles. Basically, I cart this around. Um, and it allows me to do minor repairs, um, and then if I'm doing anything a little bit bigger, I pull it into the shop here, and I'm able to work on it here. Number one, a good 3-8 socket set. Now, I used to use half-ants, but uh, what I found is that when you go from working on tractors as well as vehicles, you have to have both SAE and metric whenever you're doing it. So uh, we found that having a 3 8 inch in here was better. Uh, it allowed me to carry around a more, a more complete set of, of, of ratchets. And then for my, uh, for my shop, I have a nice half inch and a 3 quarter inch set that I use whenever I have to pull a vehicle in here. And that gives me the leverage that I need to get. This, for carting around on the farm, is perfect. I can throw this on the back of a little tractor. Uh, I can throw it in the car and go wherever I need to go. If the tractor dies on the hillside, I can actually hand carry this up there and it works just fine. Um, and I've done that before. Obviously, next, we need a good set of wrenches. Um, and uh, uh, there's, there's lots of different brands that y'all can look at. Uh, these here are Craftsman, back when Craftsman was made in America. Um, you can still get some Craftsman that's made in America. There's lots of different brands out there, guys. Lots of different stuff that some of it's good, some of it's not. Uh, anything I bought with Husky has pretty much broken by now, so I don't buy Husky anymore. Um, I do still buy Stanley. Stanley's always been good to me, um, and so I still I don't have too big a problem with them. Uh, but there's also other good brands out there. You can spend the money and get some nice snap-on tools. Um, most of the time you can look at the reviews and you can look at the, uh, there's lots of comparisons online and I don't think the snap-ons are worth it anymore. Um, if you can get some of the older stuff, maybe. Um, but, uh, but for most homeowner use, it's easier just to buy the tool again later on if you ever break it. Uh, but most of them for, for homeowner use won't break. Now, if you're a professional mechanic, that's a different story. Uh, you need a little bit higher quality tool. I'm a big fan of buying high quality tools, but I'm not a big fan of wasting money on getting stuff that I guess I don't need. Um, and buying a nice set of dikes here, that was important to me. I use these a lot. Um, I, I use these all the time from anything from clipping f fencing, small fencing wires um, to, uh, to, to working on electrical components. And so buying a nice quality set was important to me. Okay, so. We got our sockets, got our wrenches. Next set, obviously, is our screwdrivers. 
good set of screwdrivers. Uh, like I said, I really like these old, uh, this is made in America, uh, Craftsman stuff. Um, I used to get these at Kmart. I don't know where you get them now. Uh, Kmart effectively closed down. Um, but uh, a good set of screwdrivers, like I said, I haven't been terribly impressed with the Stanley ones, uh, but there's lots of good brands out there. Klein actually makes some pretty good tools. They make some crappy quote tools as well, but they make some good stuff too. Uh, so you really have to look around. I'm not brand loyal to any one brand for vehicles or for tools. Um, I look around to who makes a quality one and where it's readily available for me at the time. Like anybody, guys, a lot of our tools came free. They were given to us by friends, family. You found them on the side of the road, wherever. And uh, so um, you, you tend to you tend to just collect tools over time if you're a tool guy. Um, and so it's not worth trying to keep them all one brand. Fourth, and these are fourth, and we're going to go fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh in no particular order, is a good pair of dikes. Um, having these is, is obviously incredibly important. You can supplement these with side cutters if you like side cutters better. I tend to find dikes a little bit more useful, but they're not as versatile as a good pair of side cutters. Um, let me show you a pair of side cutters. Side cutters are also known as lineman's pliers. You can see, I'm trying to start trying to get it to focus on them. So you can see the difference. Um, these are obviously not as versatile, but they tend to do their job a little bit better. These are a little bit more versatile. They have some different uses and uh, they certainly belong in an electrician's toolbox. Then we have just our standard pliers. Um, again, guys, using a good uh, quality brand. I'm not sure what brand these are because there's no marking on these. Um, and I have so many pairs of pliers laying around. Some of mine are really good quality snap-on ones. I still probably got a pair or two of Huskies left. So, uh, but getting a good pair of pliers um, is certainly important while you're building your tool set. Um, again, this all changes as you get tools for free, so don't, don't get too beat up over the brands. Um, pair of channel locks. Um, this is not my favorite pair of channel locks, but it does fit well in this toolbox. I like a little bit bigger one. Um, it's nicer to have a little bit more grip on those channel locks, but for automotive work, this one seems to do most of what you need to do. So my bigger ones stay in my plumbing toolbox and in my standard toolbox. And then obviously needle nose pliers. You use these a lot, um, and I use those in combination with something like this that's a, uh, um, for, for grabbing stuff in small areas. This is actually incredibly important. I use this a ton. Uh, all right, after that comes something like an adjustable crescent. Um, I do keep two full-size adjustable crescents in here, so full-size 12 inches uh, adjustable crescents in here. Um, and, uh, and that helps me get on either side of whatever it is that I'm working on. Um, and so having these uh, in here, especially when you get to those bigger bolts, and particularly if you're not doing a lot with bigger bolts and you need to, uh, and you're not actually buying a, a whole set of wrenches or whatever it is for them, uh, and that's, uh, that's incredibly important to have those. I also keep one smaller pair in here, uh, or one smaller uh, adjustable crescent in here. This is an eight inch. Uh, I do use this one quite a bit as well. Uh, any other sizes I keep, uh, they stay on my, uh, on my pegboard over there above my workbench. Uh, all right, next is some type of mallet. Uh, so whether it's a dead block hammer or a ball peen. Uh, ball peen is really nice, I do like that. I only have a couple ball peens, so I don't actually keep one in this set. I keep one on my tractor all the time for batching in and out pins. Um, and then this one stays here with my workbench so that it's always ready for me. Um, I have enough extra dead blow hammers that I keep a small dead blow hammer uh, here in my toolbox. Um, but uh, but having a good dead blow hammer is, is, is pretty essential for doing any type of automotive work. Uh, just being able to pound out whatever it is that's stuck that you're working on. Um, you don't want too big a one, and honestly, I would take a ball peen hammer over that dead blow for uh, carrying around in this toolbox. Again, uh, just where I was at tool-wise didn't make sense for me to have it. Okay, next on the list, I like my, my pin probe here. Um, I prefer this over a multimeter just simply because it fits in this tool kit a little bit better. Uh, and it's a little bit easier, lighter for me to cart around. Um, and then it tends to do everything you need it to do for most automotive stuff. Obviously, there's certain times where you need to know what the resistance is, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, for, for majority, for 95% of what homeowner level use does uh, for automotive stuff, this will take care of you. And then my multimeter stays here with my standard toolbox. Our number 10, our last item, some type of computer. This is a scan gauge. I'm not crazy about this one. Eventually, I'm going to buy a nicer computer. Um, uh, but uh, for now, this reads the codes that I need it to read and tells me what I need to know uh, that's wrong with my uh, with my system. But this is the, probably the, the number 10 item that I would get. Um, and uh, it saves you the trip to the auto parts store. Um, you can't do a lot on modern vehicles without these anymore. Um, and even modern tractors, my, my tractor thankfully does not have a, a computer, but, uh, but all, all the, uh, anything modern now that's being built in the U.S., it, it does. And so you'll need that, uh, that ability to read the OBD2 port um, and actually look through that.
Okay, so there you have it guys. That's our top 10 list for, for tools. Um, again, I'm sorry for the lack of videos lately. We will have a bunch more coming out here this spring and we'll, we'll, we'll start getting caught up on that. But I uh, hope this helps you get set up when you're getting your automotive toolbox put together uh, to be able to work on any of your equipment, whether that's riding lawn mowers, whether that's a push mower, whether it's a weed eater, whether it's a 150 horsepower tractor. Uh, having something like this put together uh, is incredibly important. You'll find what you need. Um, I've changed this over time. I probably take away and add to a tool now and again. Um, but, uh, but for the most part, this now stays about where it is. Anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, because the subscribes, uh, subscriptions do really help us out. Check us out on Facebook if you haven't looked there either. Uh, Mandolin will have some blogs coming out here this spring. Uh, so specifically, she's going to be starting our garden here this spring, and so she's going to be doing a lot of blog posts about that, letting everybody know kind of what's going on there. Thanks again for watching, guys. This is Maggie with Ironside Ranch.